Okay, can you? So welcome back, everybody. This is Night Flight and uh, Eve Logan is back. And today our topic will be twin flames, twin <laughs> flames. And um, then uh, later on, we will dive a little bit into the subject of soul harvesting and what is that about and um, how does that function? So Eve, welcome back. Well, thank you for having me and uh, being able to speak freely with you is always an honor and a privilege. So I'm I'm grateful. Oh, thank you. And uh, I always love your expertise. I have to say we already had a great conversation before the camera started rolling. Yeah, we did. A bit of a spontaneous one. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, um, and there are two terms that okay. we hear a lot. Uh, one is soulmate and one is twin flame. So are these two terms connected? And uh, what would you say is the difference, if there is any? Well, I think there is a difference, although I'm not sure of the accuracy of of the twin flame thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think a soulmate would be really anyone that has a familiarity through a previous connection in another karmic or incarnation or another experiential way that's not like in the current lifetime. And it's something that could be realized and remembered because there's a strong connection. And I think that's valid and that does happen. Um, and then the, the twin flame thing seems to be the belief that we actually have an other half that we are part of the same soul somehow and that we've been split kind of like the original adam and eve was an androgynous being much like the angels actually originally still are and that there was a separation of the sexes that caused us to incarnate separately uh, until maybe we find our other half again and and i really don't know the truth about that and you know it may it might be true on some esoteric level but I think what's experienced and you know referred to nowadays is it's really common on the internet, uh, especially with the twin flame thing, is is something that's not really a true uh, twin flame. It's something more of a manipulated kind of relationship that has qualities of of a very strong uh, connection that is above and beyond the norm, but it actually follows the dynamic of a kind of uh, manipulated relationship that is like a narcissistic uh, abuse situation yeah so that many people even who don't have let's say a necessarily a spiritual approach to understanding this have recognized it and come out on the internet um, to describe that they call it the twin flame cult ideology that's promoted by many you know, many new age, you know, kind of people who, who want to believe in this and create some kind of truth narrative about it and all the different stages that this twin flame relationship will go through according to whatever spiritual ideologies they're attaching to it and, and the phases they go through. Oh, and then when you go through these phases and experience it, it's, it's classic uh, nar narcissistic abuse that is experienced like a a love bombing, um, an attentional thing that is the hook, right? The hoovering of the love bombing that is the the phase of, you know, feeling a lot of love and um, a shared connection. And then, then they will have like a running away, a pulling away of a lot of chaos and drama, much like the alien love bite. Well, they call the, uh, sometimes they call it the twin flame runner thing, but really mm -hmm. it's, it's part of a discard uh psychological tactic that a narcissistic personality would do which is kind of like this push pull but it's when they push them away causing the other one to be pining away feeling because they're being discarded right a devaluation and a discard phase and then the hoovering starts over again and so but i believe that this is more than a psychological manipulation per se that there's something deeply energetic spiritual or even demonic going on that powers it up to make it a much more um, profound experience of energy loss as well and it can feel very blissful in, in the beginning parts and it can pull you in 
So um, this has been kind of figured out by many who have gone through this and actually used to promote it and then came through one of these bad uh, false twin flames where the partner was not only, um, let's say, a classic narcissistic personality disorder type of personality, but someone who has the, it's almost like they have a supernatural attached entity that can do things on a telepathic and an energy bonding level that is above and beyond the natural uh, love connection with like astral invasions or linking into the energy centers and uh, having, you know, telesthesia and tele te telepathy. And um, they can't let go of the obsession as if it's taken hold of them and in a way that's not normal. So all these things people are starting to figure out, but they're coming out on the end of having been, let's say, on the victim or the codependent end of feeling like they were manipulated by a narcissist or a predator or a system or a cult that actually um, propelled them and encouraged them through psychic readings or tarot readings or channeled readings, like getting your angel guide or, um, I mean, I have an example of, of a case um, because there's some forms of uh, what they call manifesting. Let's say mm -hmm. people who are kind of in, you know, for lack of a better term, we'll call it new age ideologies and practices of believing in the universe and manifesting their soulmate and doing a special uh, meditation to bring them in. And then maybe uh, a profound dream or astral connection takes place that leads them to specific information about a certain thing or a place or a person. And then they may meet the person and go to this uh, spiritual healing group with a specific name. And they, they meet a, a, a particular person, let's say the man who's the one in charge, who's a meditation guru teacher. And then it starts off this uh, love by false twin flame thing. And uh, it plays out under a very manipulated circumstances that opens them up spiritually and energetically, even activating the Kundalini. Mm -hmm. So here we have something much more profound than just a, a simple soulmate or calling in a, or even just with a narcissist, there's something more going on. Mm -hmm. so. And if you, um, yeah, start researching that subject, um, you will find that, Oh my goodness, that is highly disputed, this whole uh, topic. There are people who, yeah, wonderful, and this is how you can see that this is your uh, twin flame. And, um, you know, I'm usually not a fan of checklists. Yeah, let's say like a sanction symptoms checklist. Do you have this, 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 this? And, um, and then there are other people that say this thing has to die it has to die in the fire this nonsense of twin flames it's totally bogus and there's nothing about it so um yeah i would say in general if you know if somebody wants to believe i'm living with my twin flame go ahead as long as it is a happy relationship, one that is relaxed, you know, where you do not always feel you have to play a role or you are constantly uh, riddled by anxiety um, mm -hmm. or you have the feeling you have to walk around on eggshells with that particular person. Yeah. So um, as long as you feel good and you are having fun and it's a balanced relationship go ahead you know i don't care if you believe that uh, that is your uh, twin flame where it gets especially um yeah problematic is what you hinted as at when you said yeah sometimes people think they are in this uh, also wonderful relationship and you know, I even heard things like, ah, oh, you know, Judith, uh, twin flame relationships, they are supposed to be very, very um, annoying and exhausting and this and that and the other. And um, yeah, 
I can listen to that for a while until I say, don't you see that you are just justifying yeah. being with a narcissist? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. I think there's a lot of belief in, uh, and this happens with people where they, they bend basically to the dark night of their soul with just being wrought out in extreme chaos, uh, confusion, energy vampirism, the gaslighting, the profound highs and lows, and the, the real astral connections, maybe past life memories, where they believe they've had the um, awakening. This caused their awakening. So the whole idea is that when you meet your twin flame, you will be faced with you know all your issues so that you could come to the awakening. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the justification. But and, and someone can actually, you know, we can face our our demons and our complex trauma, what it's really about, but it doesn't justify the the abuser who who doesn't change and who's actually a, a very, very high level con artist. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this this is what had happened in, you know, many of the cases where it was more of a high level uh, twin flame connection with uh, someone that is playing spiritual guru. Um, through a, a light center spiritual group uh, where they're, um, you know, doing the ascended master teachings. Maybe it's the Blavatsky and things along with some calling in these ET light beings and opening portals and UFO, whatever sightings. And then, <laughs> um, then the entities, they, they will play nice as long as you believe them and want to go along with the program of maybe these wonderful channeled messages. But once someone challenges and really it's almost as if you have to want to perceive clearly regardless of what you want to believe or what you're fearing to see the truth behind let's say a being that's coming in as uh in this particular case it was el moira so in the mm -hmm. blavatskian teachings with some of these ascended masters there's many different ones like you know saint germain is like the main one and then there's a uh, dual cool and you know, all yeah. these different classic, you know, white brotherhood, ascended master. One key. Yeah. yeah. And so in this particular case, she actually wanted to see the real form. And it was a, I believe it was a, a Draco or a, a dark, a very dark entity that then would harass her. And, um, and then there was this dynamic of being, you know, pulled back into the cult. So she came out of one cult and then wanted to get healing from just a like a, it was a doomsday bible cult right mm -hmm. and so she decided to you know question all that wanted to work on her healing and get involved in something that was more open minded <laughs> and less biblical and it was like a classic new agey one and then getting pulled in because it sounded good based on uh, doing a meditation to manifest her soulmate right and then being uh, shown in a dream, which was actually an astral abduction that had these signs and signatures of a classic abduction, um, where let's say you would have the sleep paralysis, and then, but it was more of an astral abduction where you're taken on some kind of like medical kind of table thing, and uh, then being told, oh, you need to go to in four moons you will meet this person, and you need to go to this place called spiritual light center or whatever it was it was a specific name right so they gave them specific information about you know they're meeting someone in four moons time and to go to this particular place okay with this meditation thing but what it was it was like as if some kind of permission or spiritual law was open to allow these beings to access astrally through an abduction and then programming happened in the astral realm of something real that exists on earth locally with this group that's already connected with a group of people who are practicing classic you know new age healing stuff but with the ascended master teachings and the ufo et light beings who are manifesting through these ascended masters and the the guru master teacher is a male who um you know invites her in and they really like her because she has a lot of spiritual abilities because many of these people already have psychic abilities and healing abilities so they want to put her to work immediately in the um, spiritual group doing healings and different channeling different things and then using her and then basically leading her to the guru leader 
through kundalini activation by getting permission well we'll we'll activate your energy so you can use your abilities more and become more spiritually evolved so that she can have more love and bliss and you know become more spiritually evolved and ascend more into 5d okay Mm -hmm. and then using that as the opener the portal opener for the accessing of kundalini to link in with this guy who's being controlled controlled and manipulated and hosted by these high level beings pretending to be ascended masters and they're really like some other high level vampiristic being and so it was this whole dynamic of a love bite relationship where there's a hierarchical control so you can call it a twin flame thing in this particular case i can't mention names it's on my website by the way um it was the ancient priestess uh programming with this woman named grace Okay, and so a lot of this goes along with many women um, and even men in some of these spiritual circles. They want to uh, really embody and in the sacred sexuality tantric connection that of the divine feminine, the divine masculine to create and manifest more fully, you know, an ideal relationship or an ideal spiritual manifestation of, you know, heaven on earth, basically. But then this particular belief is being um, hijacked by predators on very high levels who could do a pretty good pretense. But when you get close, um, like the, let's say the male who is the guru would be the hierarchical person in a hierarchical position of control and power, like the, the teacher, and she would be the student and he would help her heal by her revealing to him all her traumas which he's taking as information for further manipulation and control because that's what narcissists do. And then while playing like, well, he's not really in a happy marriage, but he's married to somebody else, but he's going to take advantage of her with a manipulated Kundalini so that she could fall in love with him and he could loose feed and do all this astral sex shit on the side with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a high level predator. And that's going on in this hierarchical situation where, you know, the twin flame partner who's the guru was always in the position of control and manipulation. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in this particular case, once she realized this was happening, she decided to, to leave the group. She did have some past life memory things coming up of, you know, ancient Egypt stuff and pre-Atlantan times. And, and so once she got out of it, Um, you know, for a while, it was like over a year. And then she ended up going to a conference where she could learn about things she was interested in. She was still interested in spirituality and healing and, you know, open-minded and and a a good person, but still codependent and and not fully healed because it takes a long time to heal this kind of trauma. I'm telling you, it's, it's not something that's easily done. I think only in hindsight do many people who've been through what we call attachment trauma and do we realize how long it really takes to heal and recognize how these attachment trauma wounds can lead us susceptible not seeing the red flags of being manipulated by high level predators or even garden variety narcissists so this is what happens in the in a lot of these spiritual groups that are that are grasping these ideologies of benevolence and wonderful manifestation but they they completely bypass the uh the psychology of abuse codependency narcissistic personality disorder and how con artists will do the classic uh, love bombing devaluation discard gaslighting and mind control to a a very very deep and profound level and it's going on a lot of spiritual communities even many religions too So, so anyway what what was interesting about this particular case was the um I called it a poster child case of classic, what we call in um, my work with the <clears throat> the alien love bite, for example, and the dark side of Cupid, where what we call it classic interference patterns, where something is literally orchestrated and set up in and through time or through the astral realms or unseen realms that create profound synchronicities, um, strange manifestations that show this this is being orchestrated above and beyond what is natural uh, human 3d psychology like living and so this this happens where once she got out of the cult group and she was starting to heal and just meeting people trying to do the right thing like meeting people getting reconnected from being isolated and hurt trying to do the right thing 
And then, you know, finding someone who really wanted to hear her story and, you know, liked that she was a warrior and, and it was another love bite setup. So out of the frying pan and into the fire, after you're done with one love bite, the, this interdimensional force that still has spiritual laws of connecting will come and use another partner to link you right back in through another drama, another situation that seems right, but it's a, a similar pattern. So it was another love bite with another guy who was actually, um, you know, more than narcissistic. He might've had um, demonic hosting and multiple personality going on because he was doing channeling and allowing channeling these beings to take him over you know, thinking it was the right thing to do with doing like ayahuasca and all this other shit, you know, with people who are unhealed, they're just opening themselves up. Yeah, <laughs> so sure. that was a, a huge drama with um, even time, um, how we perceive time, like her perception of time was being distorted because he was so good at uh, overlaying his uh, gaslighting um, control of her perceptions and so this this goes into something that is much more than just a simple psychology of narcissism. It goes into the the supernatural or we can call it hyperdimensional energetic. There's something else going on behind the scenes that most people don't perceive. That mm -hmm. is the real reason why it's so weird and so profound and so harmful over the long run. So anyway, this woman uh, got caught up in another love bite and over a longer period of time where her her true compassion and empathy and what you know desire to actually help this man and because he helped her and it was kind of like I'll help you you help me but then he was still manipulating all right um and using her wounds against her in a, in a con artist fashion because he he was so compelled by the dark spirits controlling him that they can't play fair they will use whatever situation they can to retake control to be a con artist and manipulate so they don't ever play fair in a relationship and that that is something that we don't many of us don't get like predators stay predators narcissists mm -hmm. stay narcissists and if they're continually to be hosted by these beings and they don't get rid of these demonic attachments for lack of a better term they never change and they will always cause harm no matter how good they are and no matter how compassionate we are to want to help them and save them because that's part of the programming of many women or codependents have this it's a kind of a rescuing thing but it's a wanting to be the savior to help heal people because you want to do the right thing right you want to help people with your abilities to be compassionate and healing but yeah or or the motivation could also be if he sees that i'm the only one who can really help him then mm -hmm, he will and, fall in love with me <laughs> and it's like not like it's all bad because sometimes they do have a charming quality that is you know the attractor so mm -hmm. it's not like all bad and i think this is why it's it's really hard to heal because there's there's this confusion because a lot of times you really do have feelings for these people and they're and they're genuine feelings and but sometimes they're they're manipulated through kundalini or just our own personality types so i guess the long story short was this this woman was able to finally disengage and cut off contact with the second set up narcissist which she realized later was um it was all set up from an attached i think it was a draco entity from one of her earlier lifetime, um, we can call it agreement of entrapment or contractual uh, attachments that happened, let's say many lifetimes ago and, and it continued to be with her incarnation after incarnation, including the setup for the family trauma and the, and the love bites. So there was always this entity running the show, even behind the hosted ones who were the love bite setups. So let's say, the hosted super psychopath had like a high level El Moira ascended master playing God or whatever. And that was a being, but then there was another Draco actually behind that manipulating because they're all working together to make sure you stay in the fold of their little, their games. And it's always a loose feeding game of how they take spiritual 
spiritual laws that allow them to do this so they can continue to lose feed on our life force and play us like a game. It, it, it is a game to them and it yeah. is how they, how they live. So luckily she found out and was able to go back to the original lifetime to undo the contract where she was used as a ancient priestess we can call it sacred sexuality priestess horror in, a, in, a, in several lifetimes where in that belief system or spiritual tradition um, and it was always hijacked by the males that would use the females who had this high um, what do you call it position in society sometimes they would be perceived as being special and wonderful but really they just used them as um, sexual spiritual horrors that would bring in energy because they're used as portals and they have the magical creative energy but then they hijack it through sexual tantric manipulation in these hijacked religions and spiritual practices and this goes on after many lifetimes and it's and it's they don't really let you know what's really going on in these high level things which is why they will they will elevate them on a pedestal behind the scenes but in 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 life they will always make like say the woman the lower um the lower echelon like a second class citizen that they mm -hmm. they know they're not the ones in control and power it's always like the male patriarchal religions in control but secretly they're using these tantric priestesses yeah because it's not power. true that they are holding yeah, the power, power <laughs> thing so and, mm -hmm. it, and it's almost like this uh, what can i call it it's like a seduction that takes mm -hmm. place i've seen this even in some um, spiritual circles um, where they highly praise this uh, priestess sacred sexuality role and archetype and want to put that on a pedestal to use it as having all this power and, you know, manifesting and being this wonderful goddess or whatever, you know, and then they're really being manipulated by these high level ascended masters as part of the same game plan that's been doing the same thing for a very long time. And people, even today, they're, they're blindsided thinking that they're in these positive spiritually sense ascension groups and they're being run by these same old friggin' predators. And, and these love bite twin flame things. But the thing is, uh, if you go along with it and you, and let's say, and you do their bidding or you do their channelings and you um, basically help promote them, this is what I've seen in my work with, with the early alien and ET contact where some of them, if they were doing the bidding of, let's say, high level handlers that were either ascended masters or sometimes they were reptilians or dracos, but they they played the role of promoting them that they're good, that they're advanced and they were helping them and they were doing what they're told by their handlers, but they got special, um, what do you call it? Kudos for that. Mm -hmm. they would get houses they wanted to live in. They would have the right partner. That would seem like a good relationship. They would always get a job. Um, things would always just happen for them. And, and by golly, they were spiritually advanced and they just created their reality. And that's because they have good karma and they're just wonderful. And then so when the shit starts happening to you because you uh, challenge their deception, that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when they start attacking you and targeting you and makes look like, look, you look like well, you have bad karma. You're playing a victim. You know, you're just not as spiritually advanced as I am. You're not going to go to 5D. You know, you're just, you're just being negative, you know, because <laughs> you see the fucking reptilian behind the person who's the head of this social group, who's a social narcissist. Okay. So- yeah. You didn't want to get me started on going on a rant because when I when I see these things and I continue to get clients who are who have maybe been through one of these things and they're still going through like a prolonged grieving process or mm -hmm. even a physical disability as a result of the the vampirism thing or whatever you want to you know the whole narcissistic abuse is quite heavy when you finally mm -hmm. can start coming out of it 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 takes a long time. Yeah. Um, like the woman who had come to me, you know, and shared the story, which I'll give you links later so that people could just look it up. I mean, this must have taken 10 to 15 years at least um, of healing. So you're talking about a long time before people can come to these deep insights of finally discovering and healing and getting a sense of balance. But it doesn't come with, you know, all roses and fireworks of now you're finally well and you finally have the perfect relationship. 
um, many people who've gone through this, they, they remain single for a long time, or they may choose to be celibate because if they want a partner that has understanding and can function in a healthy way and not be manipulated, it's, it's slim pickings. Oh, I hate to say it, but if you've been through things like this, it can be quite slim pickings or at a certain age, let's say after age 55 for a woman or at age 50, um, you know, you're looking for, there's maybe 10 men for every one woman. So, I mean, no, 10 women for every one man. And mm -hmm. so this is what you're dealing with in a lot of, um, it's just how it is in a lot of communities. So m many of these spiritual communities, and even, uh, I don't want to say patriot, but the ones who claim to be awake, um, they're dominated 80% women. So a lot of these spiritual groups are pretty much dominated by by women or older women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it begs the question, you know, where where's the men in this? Um, the healthy men. And are they aware of this whole dynamic? And you know, many, many women, let's say, who've been in a marriage where they realize, oh, you know, their their partner is is a narcissist, they have unresolved trauma or addictions, and they want to do marriage counseling, which is, you know, a logical thing to want to do to keep a marriage going or a relationship. And then the partner, you know, is very reluctant or only goes to, you know, play the therapist and pretend and then not really do the real recovery work or the real self-inquiry to make the changes from their own history that that's really contributing to the problem. Mm -hmm. So most of the narcissists, I will say, who have that personality style, they don't change. They don't get better. It's they don't change for the most mm -hmm. part. So when you realize that, that that's, I think, the hard part for, for even when you're going to marriage counseling. And, and they can trick counselors pretty well as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, you're and well, it doesn't do anything if you take a narcissist to a uh, counseling. No, they try to trick them. And then they, mm -hmm. they just do as little as possible to manipulate you so they don't have to change, so they can gather all the evidence against you to, to cheat you even more and to then to punish you um, because you're not, you know, easy manipulated. Because they it's, it's everything is about them hiding from their true core selves and they've been copied out by something else. Uh, mm -hmm. like false mask ego or actually attached entities and, and that could happen to, to codependent people on the other end of it whose personalities tend to attract those types but they're more likely to do the recovery work and actually realize all these things that that happen so that's actually the exciting work is when what we discover of like um, what's behind this particular trauma or addiction or feeling or why do I keep attracting myself to this and then pretty soon your spirit shows you um in some way um what is happening through some archetypal symbology or a sensation or a direct memory from a past life or what's going on astrally then you start perceiving all these things and all the the ways these things really interact in in 3d reality with uh, 4d 5d whatever and how things are really taking place and and then the and the control factor of the root causes unless we i mean this is where the rubber meets the road unless we can get to the true causes and the true um healing and changes on all those levels nothing will change so mm -hmm. you know you can go to one spiritual group or one patriot group or one political party one to the other and nothing will change and they will always be manipulated by the same dynamics in some way where nothing will really change. So unless people are really talking about this and actively doing the real recovery and having true discernment and true power, which is not necessarily manifesting being powerful in the world with money or a, or a YouTube channel or a big business <laughs> or yeah. the external appearance of, you know, being, you know, having good karma. Um, it, mm. it doesn't necessarily take that appearance. So mm. this is why I guess, I don't know what I want to call it jaded, but I don't see positive change occurring through political groups where people are still run by the same root causes of um, unresolved trauma, attached entities, 
and being deceived and manipulated by these forces. And who's to say some of these forces may even be technologies, advanced technologies mm-hmm. being run by secret groups, run by the, you know, the Satanists and the people in control who are using these high level tech to manipulate large groups, political groups, spiritual groups, scientific groups, hospital groups. And so this is what this truly, however you want to do. Yeah, so uh, I guess the last sentence was not quite finished because uh, my doorbell rang. Um, But I wholeheartedly agree with what you just uh, analyzed. And I also have to say that in general, um, I have a problem with the idea that the other part of your soul, yeah, your your other half is not with you because it makes you feel as if you are not complete. You, we are not half a soul. We are a soul. End of story. Or, yeah. or the spirit part. That That's confusing. And um, I mean, I know that there's alchemical uh, work that people do in uh, like Taoist Qigong to... Um, to create alchemical change in the body for um, clearing your energy and expanding your awareness and actually doing things with energy that you can only do if you balance the the yin and the yang within your own body. So there's, there's elements of truth to like we female are more primarily yin energy, water energy, and men are more, more primarily yang from the Taoist perspective and in alchemical work. And there must be, a balance of yin and yang so that you can access what they call the non-dual prenatal energy to create um it's like how you do i don't want to say magic but alchemy is truly something that it's it's not easy to do but you have to have harmony and balance so i'm thinking that you know when maybe couples get together and they really do have a balance of the yin and the yang then they can create together in, in wonderful ways that they maybe couldn't do if they were single. Mm-hmm. So that, that there are, there are truths to, you know, having a complementary half, even though you're still a full whole person, it's just that mm-hmm. it's, it makes it easier if someone has, let's say a complementary energy that you don't have or a skill. And then when you work together as a team, it's much easier to, to manifest together. And, and with women, I mean, they know this in um, certain spiritual circles uh, that women have a portal in their womb so that um, when men and women get together and they, you know, share energies, the women can bring things into reality through their womb to into 3D reality. So they are the conduit in which this manifestation can take place because they are the portal itself. So men don't have that womb portal and don't have the ability to bring it in, but they can help catalyze that reaction through a woman. So there are reasons why there's certain um, sexuality, tantra, magic that that's done. So, uh, I mean, I can't deny that, that there is something to that, but I think oh, yeah. it's been absolutely. It's been yeah. I remember when I was uh, still practicing Tibetan Buddhism, yeah, and even there, there are um, teachings like that. I'm not saying it doesn't work. What I'm saying is <laughs> that the chance that you are, <clears throat> the teachings are being corrupted, and in fact, you do not wake up a sacred sexual energy, what you might end up is uh, either an, an orgy <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> you yeah. end up with a sexual predator that is the guru yeah. or whatever. Uh, that true. is much higher, that chance. Yeah. I wanted to um, to read an excerpt of the case I was mentioning because I wanted to make a point that in uh, one of her experiences, I'm just going to I'm just going to read it. It was when she had an experience that was like uh, when she saw the UFO and was taken on a kind of astral abduction after she met the the main man who was like the head of the spiritual group who was like the guru named, named John, and that's probably a fake name, 
but there was something happening where they, they want to create contracts for a specific reason. So they did something, I'm just going to read it from the original interview. Um, let's see where yeah, it's sure. just feeling vulnerable and, you know, they got into some conversations. It seems a perfect setup him being like this teacher mentor. And uh, he asked her if she wanted to work with beings on high who are like these high level ETs. And so she said, yes. And from that point, she began to work with them. Um, but she wasn't really able to see them very well, but he guided her to move her Kundalini energy, which was supposed to help open up her abilities to perceive and, you know, do this more easily. Um, but it caused her to have like a lot of sexual blissful feelings of attraction towards him, which is really part of, I think that the hidden motives for this type of predator. So anyway, they had a spiritual friendship mentorship on his end he was the mentor but it was had a romantic overtones um he helped her heal her past wounds and i helped him heal his relationship with his wife even though he was still married to his other wife i mean his original wife so it was kind of like a you know kind of a creepy i don't know what you want to call it anyway i just wanted to go to the point where she saw several num numerous ufos okay as well as a portal opening up from the sky and after a few months, I'm just going to read what she said. She says, after a few months, I remember having an experience with a spaceship, which I saw with my third eye. I was outside at work with my best friend. And then all of a sudden, I saw a spaceship and a beam of light. There was Elmira, the ascended master, who was connected to this John Guru teacher. Um, and he was the major guide. And so Elmira was standing there in her vision with his hand stretched out, telling me to follow him. So she went with him in this, I guess, visionary experience. And then she wasn't able to see what was happening. But then um, her, the John guy was there and, you know, trying to get her to remember and use her vision. So she remembered seeing herself on some sort of medical table. So this is where it turns into it. Like, instead of a vision, it's more of like one of these pseudo uh, ET abduction where you're on a medical table. Like, what? Right? Um, and it's supposed to be with this ascended master, but the mood on the ship was if she was to be a bride being prepared for marriage to this man named John, who was run by this El Moira ascended master that had been working with. And so they did things in this particular astral abduction bride marriage thing on the table to prepare her to be married to John and joined us together. So something happened astrally that, that, it was like a type of marriage contract that was done by these ET beings in this astral thing. But what happened later is that uh, she was told that she was pregnant. She was having like weird cramps and stuff. And then she was told by somebody in the group that she was pregnant with the light baby of this particular John who was connected with this ascended master. But what's really happening on these other esoteric levels is that they want to create some kind of marriage sacred marriage contract in an astral realm and where you know they get you to to do something astrally and then they want to impregnate the woman as a portal to bring something else through so it's like a type of pregnancy it wasn't a physical one but it was more like this light energy being they wanted her to bring it through her womb so they're trying to bring something through the woman as a portal into reality and then after this experience she got actually quite ill and had a gallbladder attack and had to have it removed and was really ill for a while so they were so there are things where they actually this is what happens in some of these really weird um love bite things where let's say the narcissist predator who's hosted for example um they have a being working through them where they they want to bring them through some kind of mock ritual marriage contract kind of thing that does something energetically and it, and it binds their souls even more. But then it's for the, I think it's so they want the woman to bring something through to literally channel or bring it through their womb into 3D, which means they could bring in demons, they could bring in entities, or in some cases, and this is something that I hadn't discussed before, uh, another case where I retrieved it from a woman who was a satanic ritual abuse survivor who had gone through, um, I guess one of her proctor, which was one of her mentors, was in a real, this is this is bizarre. It's getting really, I don't know how much time I have to talk, but it was a- you real, have, You've got time. <laughs> uh, 
Uh -huh. I just want to make a point here because they are actually doing something real here. They're actually really melding you astrally and sometimes physically with another being, but it's a very high level being that's usually hosting or acting behind a human host acting as guru, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes in, in, in some of the SRA circles where they have Christian ministers and counselors, they just call it the Nephilim and the watchers and the high level fallen angels that are actually doing this. And they're doing it on purpose to use a particular woman who's a tantric priestess that would literally meld with these fallen angel whoever these beings are and then when they do the melding together they can they can actually become pregnant in some cases but they they have to literally give up their souls in something that this woman named karen carolyn hamlet was the one who talked about this on a blog and she called it the fifth fire twin flame initiation ritual and this was where two people who were basically in the cult who are already given their lives over to satan or whatever they literally give up their souls so that two other beings take them over and possess them while the, the two uh, people have sex. And then they conceive in a, in a particular ritual where they call in a certain kind of fallen angelic being that comes in and then impregnates the woman. And then when the woman actually uh, has a pregnancy, the pregnancy is not a normal pregnancy, nor is the child. It's, it's a rapid pregnancy that it's only like five months long. And then the being grows very rapidly and is completely hosted and is like non-human, but looks human. Mm -hmm. So there's some that are physical, physical that are actually bringing through these very high level fallen angels in a type of human body that really is a hybrid Nephilim kind of thing. But then in most cases of the ones that who have had these ET connections or the ascended master thing, maybe they're not SRA. They just kind of fell into it through their own spirituality you know, searches, you know, in their life, you know, a lot of people search many things, there's nothing wrong with that. So they'll bring in what they call an astral child or a homunculus, or they'll try to have them bring things through into reality and using their womb as a portal. And so I think that's what's happening. And so they're linking in that way, but they always do this, like, they'll try to do a mock marriage ceremony kind of ritual thing that that locks them in so that these spiritual laws now are giving them over to these powers to use them and interfere with them. And then they may get set up over and over again by all kinds of uh, predatorial narcissists and, you know, high level sorcerers and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it can get pretty weird with, with some of these that I've heard about where there really are, when you say, is there really a twin flame ritual? There actually is in some of these, um, satanic uh, luciferian circles where they do it so there, there's something to that but i think they want to bring through these other higher level entities through the couple so that they literally conceive something through that union so that's where it gets kind of dangerous because uh, then you start making packs with these very high level beings and that that are hard to to remove from your life with with simple you know therapy or even simple shamanic techniques. Sometimes it's a, it's a hit and miss. And um, so there's a lot more going on than, than just a narcissist thing. Why would uh, the fallen ones even bother uh, with the spiritual laws? Because, you know, the way I look at it, this, well, what you just described, this twin flame, what was it, marriage bonding? Or... Yeah, it was like a fifth fire twin flame ritual. This was a satanic oh, okay. ceremony, fire ritual. a yeah. very, very high level It, one. it is really... not as if they disclose to the participants involved, oh. they do not disclose what is really going on. So, bottom line... It doesn't count anyhow. If you think you made a contract, no, you, it, it's a total deception. Yeah. Yes. And therefore your contract is null and void. Well, that's how Don't, I would you like can, to... Can't they see that? Uh, you know, that's a good question because, you know, I'm learning different things all the time through different uh, healing modalities and in, in, in Christian mm -hmm. terms of what allows these curses and uh, manipulations and a lot of it is about ancestral curses where um, the iniquity of 
let's say, you know, of ancestors who practice black magic, Freemasonry, different kinds of witchcraft, where they did, did blood oaths, where they brought something in. And then that's literally does stay in the bloodline. And there's actually something to that. And so that has a spiritual right. And many of these beings, they, they lay claim over certain people so that uh, oftentimes, and I've had this happen, and we just had a discussion on this in my group where, uh, where there was an encounter in a, in a dream state or a prayer or a vision where you wanted to connect with someone or help them heal um, or let's say help them get rid of an entity or to observe what was going on and with basically your spiritual eyes opened and then um, seeing like uh, like a high level being that's like a I don't know, it could be a different kind of shape-shifting being, maybe a tall robed one, could like be a Draco, could be a snake being, could be a human looking one, could be a bird shaped one, many different like Egyptian looking ones even. And then these beings will appear and saying, he's mine. They lay claim over that soul and they won't let that person go. And no matter what you do, they've laid claim to that person. So it's up to the person who is basically laid claim over to do their own recovery work, to decide that they no longer want to be under this kind of ownership and do whatever spiritual practices and prayers and deliverance to release themselves. Otherwise, when you're dealing with someone like that in a relationship, for example, let's say a twin flame or a husband or whatever, you will always be messed with as long as the other person's not willing to do their recovery work to get clean. So you're, you're spinning your wheels in an impossible situation that will never change. And of course you could pray for them all you want, but it's mm -hmm. not our job to do the work for them. And this is where a lot of, I think women have this a lot, like our programming to want to be overly helpful and be the, the, you know, super loving, forgiving partner, mother of this person who's never going to change they're not willing to be aware they're not willing to do the therapy and so you just keep falling into the trap of being endlessly used as a resource to endlessly help someone who always pull you into the ditch mm -hmm. so you there comes a point where you you have to let go of of thinking that you even need to help heal these people you can pray for them but like if they make the choice to not do their responsibility then, you know, let him go because, you know, you have a life to live and your life shouldn't be wasted on someone who's not willing to let go or to be aware or to do their work because their ego is too big because they don't do that because they're too special and they're, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm right, you know, and the the narcissist, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've got a whole, our whole world is run by, by narcissists. Groups. Yeah. So I, I don't know, I had, a, I had a rant this morning where, you know, I hear these things on the internet. Well, oh, well, Satan's gone now and the white hats won and Lucifer's no longer here. And yeah, oh, and heaven is a merry-go-round. Well, okay, it's not wonderful until every single narcissist is dealt mm -hmm. with, put in Gitmo or sent off to Mars to be eaten by spiders. Okay, and I'm just <laughs> saying that as a joke, but until people actually help one another who are truly in need, this problem has not gone away and Satan never left. And it's, it's nothing but hopium and bullshit, like by mm -hmm. a bunch of new agers who want to make you feel guilty if you're being targeted while they're being run by the same bullshit. And, mm -hmm. and I, I just get so mad. You know, you heard me rant before we even started the show because, you know, if me, my clients are coming to me with persistent issues that, you know, they're a little more sticky than what people even know what, it, what it's really involved and and that we could talk about more like there's um there's more deeper insights that have arisen in um explorations in shamanic and quantum healing work and meditations with you know the modus operandi of how some of these things work and how to release that from our our system our life and but i would say this requires a lot of dedication and a lot of work and that that may mean being single for quite a while and having to to know that you probably won't be understood by the main what do I call it? I don't even want to call it mainstream. I would just call it bell curve people, even in people who think they're awakened in spiritual groups. Because when when you look closely, they're like, I I, I can't believe they're still being led by that freaking ascended master that's hosted behind that person. They don't even see he's a shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So 
this needs to be dealt with on on deeper levels and personal levels for things to really change. But I think it can change, but we have to really, uh, really work it individually. And um, that's where, you know, the work comes and it's, I yeah. wish it was easier, but I think when we can be there for one another, just to listen and just to share, that's where the work starts because it only starts in private conversations that's basically unpublished material um, where we start discovering all kinds of things. And then we can really, you know, work with one another in ways that, you know, you don't really hear publicly, let's just say. Yeah. And um, what you mentioned before, I mean, we talked about that funny enough uh, before the, uh, we uh, started uh, recording, my goodness, the word was missing. <laughs> And um, yeah, when we talked about 5D and uh, yeah, you know, while we are at it, we can pull that tooth as well. <laughs> yeah, and, and some of that is actually being revealed in inadvertent ways uh, through mm -hmm. testimonies like uh, the Secret Space Program guy named Daryl James, who I think is authentic and 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 he doesn't. It, it, like he doesn't have an agenda to make it look any particular way. He says it as he's experienced it as it was. Long story short, there is technology that uh, some of these, what we can call it secret space program offshoot groups and whoever is the hierarchical control systems. And usually it's dark Nazi kind of stuff that has split off. And even with the department of the Navy, you know, like some military groups, but they have a, a chair that would, make you pop from 3d to 5d so that you can go into worlds and consciousness that goes above and beyond the regular 3d body consciousness and so they already have that technology so that you can interact and then have the abilities of like a hive mind and up your iq 200 points so that you could start interacting in 6d with 6d beings but if they can do that and the technology came through the dark Nazi secret space program that tells you that the 5D is even contaminated. So if they're mm -hmm. claiming that people just pop up to 5D, there, there can be technologies that do that. And you're still entrapped in a system that's still run by these friggin Nazis and yeah. whoever their offshoot, you know, people yeah, and exactly. ETs are. And not all of them are bad, but they're still interacting with with wars and and like this shouldn't be happening in some kind of a spiritually evolved system. So there's yeah. something wrong with the equation that we've normalized all this other stuff because we're so used to being abused and so used to seeing evil and normalizing narcissists and drug abusers and, you know, inequality that they, they don't even know like that Satan is sitting right in front of them, basically. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that is uh, why I, I always say nothing will be solved simply by going to 5D. Because things have been corrupted up at bare minimum up to sixty. Yeah, I would I would say so, and um, mm -hmm. I think Daryl James, at least his testimony, kind of proved it in a whole different way. That was inadvertent, really, because mm -hmm. there's so much talk about oh, we're we're going to go to five D, and the Earth is going to split to this positive timeline, and all the bad ones are just going to go away. And really, <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Well, I, I like I like to see that day and I'd like to be positive. But meanwhile, you know, the real recovery work takes mm -hmm. being willing to feel everything that is related to whatever traumas are experienced or whatever lies have been uh, realized and the, the reaction of having believed lies and be lied to and the, and the, and like having your whole life be wasted by a narcissist. And, and the feelings of that kind of, you know, that rage, that pain, that loss, that grief, we must feel it in order to get on with, you know, the next phase. And that, that means it goes through the body. It literally mm -hmm. goes through the body like shock waves, and that can make you sick for a long time, actually. So mm -hmm. a lot of recovery processes, we have to be really gentle so that we're able to do this in a way that we don't hit a, a rock bottom and and basically go into shock or or get so sick that you die because we are saved from trauma as a natural human response we dissociate so that it doesn't kill the body because the mm -hmm. psychological trauma is so great 
And that, mm -hmm. that actually is a survival mechanism. And that, that's not something that's bad. It's just that we have to work on it later in life when we're able to handle the shock waves of the truth. And mm -hmm. the truth hurts a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a fantastic first hour. I thank you so much. We are going to make a brief interruption and uh, then we will see the patrons on the other side until next time bye bye <laughs>